All right, greetings class. Uh, my name is Professor Soleil, and I will be uh, your voice uh, on these videos for the next semester. Uh, we're going to start by looking at uh, some rules that govern solving equations. Uh, any class you take, you got to start somewhere common. So this is where we're going to start out at. Uh, hopefully you have uh, printed out the notes and you are ready to join me. Uh, if not, you're more than welcome to pause it and get yourself ready. Uh, and here we go. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, this idea of solving equations. And in solving equations, we're going to identify a couple of just quick rules that we can use to manipulate any sort of equation that we are dealing with. Uh, so the first rule that we can deal with is that we can interchange two sides of an equation. So let's say I've got something really simple like x equals 3, well, switching sides, 3 equals x, does not necessarily doesn't do anything. Uh, it's still a true statement. Uh, I guess that's one idea to think about with equations as we're trying to maintain truthfulness. Uh, or from earlier days, uh, you might have heard it called balancing. We're trying to keep the balance of the equation. All right, our second uh, step is to simplify the sides of an equation by combining like terms on the same side. Uh, so we might have something like this, where it's x plus 2 plus 6 equals uh, 2x plus x plus 1. And on the left side, uh, we can combine the 2 and the 6 to get 8. And on the right side, we can combine the 2x and the x to get 3x. So as long as they're on the same side of the equation, we can combine them together. Now, combine may mean subtract. Um, so let me kind of show you what I'm talking about here. So had that, it said 2x minus x, and we just had x there. Okay. So the idea of combining on the same side is it just has to be on the same side. And then we can combine them using the signs that we see. Uh, our third step involves distributing. So we are allowed to uh, distribute uh, in, in a given equation uh, on the same side. So if I had 3x, uh, sorry, 3 parentheses x minus 2 equals 2 times x minus 4 something else. Um, okay, I can distribute on the left. So 3x times x is, sorry, 3 times x is 3x, and that's minus 6. Uh, and then here we have 2x minus 8, but I don't distribute to the 3 because I'm adding 3 at the end. So then I would just add 3 there. Now at this point, if we were to keep going, we could apply the previous rule about combining like terms. But at this particular moment, I just want to illustrate the different rules that we have at our disposal and then we'll actually look at some physical e examples of this. Uh, we can add or subtract uh, the same non-zero expression to both sides. Um, so let me kind of go back to our problem here. Uh, 2x uh, minus 5 is what it would be next. OK. So from here, what we're saying is uh, when I want to move, when I get, want to get rid of something on one side, I can either choose to add the same expression to both sides, or I can subtract the same expression to both sides. So in this case, I want to add 6. And I can do that as long as I do that to both sides. So that part goes away. And I'm left with 3x equals 2x plus 1. Uh, and then the other thing that I can do is, in this case, I want to go ahead and subtract uh, 2x from both sides. And the uh, idea that I'm trying to solve for x eventually. Uh, so 2x equals, I'm sorry, 3x equals 2x. Uh, and I said that, but I didn't write that. Let me try that again. So 3x minus 2x. So again, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the same thing off of both sides. So on, and then I can apply the combined like terms idea. So 3x minus 2x is just x. And then those two x's uh, cancel each other out and we're left with one. So now we have our first actual solution. But again, we're just looking at what our 
possible things that we can do in solving an equation. Uh, our fifth X, our fifth rule that we can use, our fifth procedure, so we can multiply or divide by the same non-zero expression. Uh, so let me take something like this. So 3x over uh, x minus 1 equals 6 over x minus 1. Okay. And if I'm trying to solve for x in this case, what our rule says is as long as I don't multiply by 0, I can multiply by whatever I want. So... Just looking real quick, um, if x happens to be uh, x minus 1, and I multiply both sides by x minus 1, so in other words, I'm going to kind of write this out here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 1. But to make sure I don't violate that rule, I'm going to go ahead and let x not be equal to 1. I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. x does not equal 1. Uh, in which case I can justify why it's okay for me to multiply it by x minus 1. Uh, now, what happens here, since I'm multiplying and dividing by x minus 1 at the same time, then on the left side I have 3x, and on the right side I have 6. Which brings us to the other part of this statement, that I can divide by both sides. So I am more than welcome to come in here and divide both sides by 3, which again allows us to get a solution. So we end up with x equals 2. Okay. Uh, and then the last uh, procedure that I'll show you, and then we'll actually look at several, several examples of this, uh, is called the zero product property. The zero product property is used mainly when we have a factorable expression of some kind. Uh, and so we'll use this more exclusively in, in future lessons. Um, but since we're solving equations, might as well show you how that looks. So let's say I've got an equation uh, where I've got it equal to 0 on one side and it is factored on the other. Okay, that's the giveaway that I can go ahead and apply this rule. And what the zero product property says is that if I have the product of two or more things that happen to equal 0, that means one of them has to be at least zero. So I'm going to set each factor equal to zero, and then I can apply previous rules uh, and worry about solving from there. Uh, so obviously we have x equals zero for one answer. And here, if I add three to both sides, then I get my other solution. So in this particular case, I get zero and three. Okay, so those are all the rules that we're going to utilize when solving some type of equation, and uh, we're going to look at some different illustrations of all these little concepts. Okay, so in our first example, uh, let's kind of talk about um, which rules we can apply. Um, anytime I see parentheses, I want to think about the idea of distributing and whether or not that would make sense to uh, do. And in this case, uh, multiplying by the 3 would give me things that I could add or subtract from there. So uh, another way to think about it is PEMDAS. Um, multiply takes precedence over add and subtract. So anytime you see a multiply, you want to try to, you want to do it. So I'm going to distribute the 3 in, and that'll give me uh, 6 minus 3x equals 2x minus 1. Uh, then from here, let's see, uh, I want to get variables on one side and numbers on the other. So I think if I add, uh, let's see, let's add 3x to both sides. And... I realize that some of us are thinking, man, he's going really slow on this. I could do two steps at once. Okay, but I don't know who's watching the video, so I have to be very careful about how much detail I, I include. I'll make sure I put enough explanation that everybody understands what's happening here. So the 3x's uh, cancel out, and I'm left with 6. And over here, 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. Okay, and then I want to take care of the 1. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And I said it, but I didn't write it. Um, okay, so now I'm adding 1. So 
So that gives me 7 equals 5x. Uh, and then from here, I want to divide by the same expression. Okay, so x happens to be 7 fifths. All right, that's a perfectly good answer. Uh, next one. Now, if you notice, the negative is attached to the parentheses. The 7 is not. Uh, so we can think of it like there's an imaginary 1 just sitting there. And so I'm going to distribute the 1 in. So uh, let's see. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. OK. And automatically, I can use the combine like terms on, say, on the same side rule. And let's see, so 7 and 1 give me 8 minus the 2x equals 10. And I'm thinking it would make sense to subtract off the 8. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to subtract 8 off both sides. So that's negative 2x equals 2. And then I would divide by 2, or sorry, negative 2. And so uh, neg uh, 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. <coughs> OK, so uh, now we're going to throw some fractions in there. And uh, one of the techniques that we talked about is we can multiply or divide by the same expression. Now, when you start off with a series of fractions, uh, you can do something called what clear the fractions, uh, or clearing the fractions. And the idea being, uh, I'm going to multiply by a number that will uh, that that is the biggest denominator that they all have in common. Well, looking at the fractions here, I've got a one half uh, and I've got a three fourths. Well, what's the biggest denominator that they are in common with? And that would be four. So if I multiply both sides by 4, that will get rid of the fractions, and I won't have to deal with fractions. Now, there's nothing wrong with fractions. Um, we're good at fractions. We've spent years perfecting our skills. Uh, even if we don't believe that, uh, your job is to act with confidence, I guess. All right, so from here, I'm going to distribute those 4s in. And so 4 times a half, well, a half of 4 happens to be 2, so we get 2x there, uh, minus 20, and then 3 fourths of 4, so the 4s divide out, and I'm left with just 3x. And I, it makes sense if I would subtract off a 2x here, so 2x minus 2x minus 20 equals 3x minus 2x. So again, I can do the same. As long as I do the same thing to both sides, then I have it balanced, and we're fine. Uh, so the 2x's cancel out, and I'm left with negative 20. And here we just have x. So there actually is our solution, is negative 20. OK. Uh, this other problem, uh, we have a denominator of x, and a denominator of 3, and a denominator of 6. So uh, I, looking at what do they have in common, well, I know they at least have to have a 6, because uh, 6 divides out of 6, and 6 divides by 3 evenly. What about x? Well, I don't know what x is, so it has to have a factor of x in there. So I'm going to multiply everything by 6x. Now. Well, our rule says that I can do that. I can multiply by a non-zero expression. So I just have to make a statement that I acknowledge that x cannot be 0. So I'm just going to write that off to the side, indicating that I know that I can do what I just did because 6x, I promise, is a non-zero expression. OK, now, when I distribute, All right, so I'm going to be a little more detailed than I have been in previous examples. Uh, and then 6x times 1 over 6. OK, so the x's divide out here. So those are gone, and I'm left with 6 times 3, which is 18. 
uh, here, 3 divides into 6 twice, and then 2 times 1. So I'm left with uh, 2x. And then over here, the 6 is divide out, and I'm left with x times 1, or just x. Okay. And so at this point, I want to add uh, 2x to both sides. Okay, so that gives me 18 equals uh, 3x. Let's scroll this down here real quick. Okay, so uh, how do, what do I do to get rid of the 3? So divide both sides by 3. And so 18 over 3 happens to be 6. And so there's our solution. And notice... Um, I did acknowledge that x can't be 0. It turns out our solution it happens to be 6, so we're fine. Okay, so in this example, uh, we're going back to that fraction idea that we're going to have to multiply by something. And we're looking at all these denominators uh, and right now I'm thinking what is the relationship between x squared minus 9 and x plus 3 and hopefully hopefully we're we recognize that uh, x squared minus 9 is what's called a difference of two squares it's a, a factoring special factoring uh, process and so uh, that would factor into x plus 3 and x minus 3 now there are a couple of topics that I found that if students, that you know, I assume as, as a college algebra professor that we understand these topics. Uh, and yet I find that when I make assumptions, well, we know how that goes, right? Um, but this is one of those times where I am serious. If factoring is an extreme weakness for you, if I just confused you beyond belief with just this one factoring example, please let me know. Email me uh, today. Now, stop. Stop what you're doing to go email me. And I will send you some resources uh, just to practice factoring. Uh, factoring is one of those topics that if you are not good at it uh, and cannot figure it out, that will prevent you from passing this class. Uh, it's something that was taught in previous math courses, and it's an assumption that we have to make that you know how to factor. So if that is an unfair statement for you, uh, please contact me and let's do something about this rather than sit there quietly. Okay, now back to this problem. Uh, we see that uh, x squared minus 9 is really x plus 3x minus 3. So I'm going to rewrite this. And, and I again, I'm going way more in-depth and I'm being maybe more detailed than maybe you uh, feel the need to. But I want you to understand and see why this problem works out the way it does. Okay x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay. Now, uh, what do I multiply by? I have to multiply everything by the x plus 3 and the x minus 3 since that would be our common denominator. So I'm going to set up just this big massive brick of problems. might be thinking, I don't want to write all that out. Well, if it helps you get the answer right and helps you see it, then I don't see a problem with it. x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay. Now, think back to our rule. Our rule says that I can do that. I can multiply by anything I want as long as it's a non-zero expression. So I need to go back real quick and I need to say, well, I am making an assumption that x is not, well, looking at this first piece, what is it not? Well, it's not negative 3. So if x was negative 3, then that expression, that piece right there, would be 0. Well, what else is it not? Well, x minus 3 would be positive 3. So I can do what I did as long as x does not turn out to be 3 or negative 3. If x turns out to be 3 or negative 3, then I don't have a solution to this problem. Okay, So we're going to keep going. And I'm going to distribute that in. 
All right, now on this first piece, what do you notice about x plus 3 and x minus 3? Well, hopefully you notice they divide out of the first fraction. And so we're left just with x. And in the second fraction, the x plus 3s divide out, but what's left over? x minus 3. Uh, and then over here on the right side, uh, the denominator and the thing we multiply by, those divide out, and we're left just with 3. So we did all that lovely fancy work and just end up with this nice simple statement. Uh, and then I can distribute again. So the 4 can go into the x minus 3. So that's 4 plus, I'm sorry, x plus 4x minus 12 equals 3. Uh, then I can combine like terms on the same side, so that's uh, 5x minus 12 equals 3. And I notice that I can add 12. So I'll do that. I'm going to add 12 to both sides. So on the left side I have 5x, and on the right side I have 15. And we'll divide by 5, and so x happens to be 3. Okay, now we got a, we got a problem here, because way back at the beginning, I said that we can multiply by that expression as long as x doesn't turn out to be those two things. Well, I found that the only thing that will make the original equation true if it is, is if it happens to be 3. So we kind of have this circular problem. It's I can only get 3 if I can justify that it's not 3, but I can't justify that's not 3. So in other words, uh, there's no solution to this particular problem. Okay, So you do want to be careful with those uh, initial expressions and make sure that uh, you, when you're multiplying by a variable expression, you do identify what, what number would make that variable expression be 0, uh, because it turns out you might actually have to ignore that part of the solution when you actually get done. So just be aware of that.